Hello, beautiful earthlings. It is I, Christina, and it's time for part two of my vlog. And today I'm talking a little bit about the workouts that I've been doing, the exercise I've been doing to keep my arthritic foot healthy and to prepare for surgery um, as best as I can. Now, I will tell you that what I am doing is absolutely not what the doctor told me to do. And I'm gonna let you know a little bit of why, and we can get into that more um, in future vlogs as well. But um, basically when I was diagnosed with the arthritis, I'd already had it for a really long time and been kind of managing it as best as I could. Got the x-ray, doctor said, all right, you've got this osteoarthritis, you have these bone spurs, they're knocking into each other. What you need to do is get a super supportive shoe that has zero flexibility in the sole in order to support your foot and make sure that your toe isn't bending. Now, <laughs> everything I know about working with other people's bodies and especially with my body being a hypermobile body is that if you have a range available to you, that range needs to be strengthened. If your elbows hyperextend, you've got to strengthen that hyperextension. If your knees hyperextend, you've got to strengthen that too. Because if you have a range that your body can achieve that isn't stable and strong and supported, that's most likely where you're gonna get an injury. And I feel that the same is true of this foot. Yes, I have this arthritis. Yes, I cannot move my toe a lot. I cannot lift my heel a lot. It does affect the way that I move and walk. But I do have some toe flexion still, and I'm still using it. I'm still using it as I walk around. There's no way I'm gonna wear shoes all the time. I'm gonna spend time barefoot. I, I still like to move. I still need to move to keep my, my mind sane and my body healthy. So I need to be strong in the range that is available to me and wearing super supportive shoes. And I promise I'm gonna do a vlog on that in the future. I have a little bit of a beef with the overuse of very supportive shoes because what it does is it takes all the agency away from your feet. Your feet no longer have to participate in your life, right? They're just hunks of meat on the end of your legs. And I knew that I didn't want to do that to my feet. I want my feet to be prepared for surgery by being strong. I want my arches to be strong. I want my toes to be strong and I want to preserve the form of my foot as best as I can. So I decided to do workouts that are really focused on strengthening the feet and lower body. Um, I did a lot of preparation for that. I've been doing the ATG online program that I found a uh, knees over toes guy on Instagram really great resource for people who are interested in doing um, more intensive lower body focus or having knee or foot or hip, uh, ankle pain. And um, I have been doing sprinting, barefoot sprinting on a treadmill, not outside, um, as a way of keeping my feet and lower body strong. And what I have found is that has actually really decreased the amount of pain I have walking around and uh, on a daily basis. I generally, if I'm here in the gym I usually work out in, um, I am barefoot for my workouts. If I'm on the road or you know in a public gym, then I'm wearing minimalist shoes. I really like these very flexible soled shoes with a large toe box from Zero that um, really uh, force my feet to do some serious work when I'm working out, especially if I'm doing balancing work and stuff like that. So let me show you a few of my favorite exercises that I feel like have really helped to keep my feet strong. I like to start things off with balancing one foot on a BOSU ball. And um, I started doing this exercise oh, 15 years ago when I was rehabilitating my hip injury. And I really like it because it makes your feet work super hard to find that stabilization, but it also really makes your foot have a relationship all the way up the leg to your hip. And you can feel how your hips, your glutes, and the leg muscles and the feet muscles are all kind of working together to help you find that stability, especially if you start adding some movements with the flying leg. And I really enjoy doing that along with the bending and straightening of the standing legs. So I always feel like doing that just boom, I'm in the game. My body's starting to get warm almost immediately. After that, I move into this great ATG exercise um, called the Patrick Step. And um, I have built up to doing it elevated and then adding weight. When I first started, I was just doing flat on the ground. And this is a really great foot strengthener, but it also really works the knees and the muscles that support the kneecap. Because what I found is that the arthritis, the way that it shifts my gait, if I'm not careful, can put extra stress on my knees. So keeping my knees strong has been incredibly helpful to 
making sure that I can still walk around without pain. And never want to forget this great ATG exercise, walking backwards on a treadmill. You just keep the treadmill turned off, put your butt against the armrest, and move the treadmill with the strength of your feet. Now this one was one that I was worried would be a little sketchy because unlike many of the other exercises I do, I do have to go into toe flexion to do it. But I, my litmus test for everything is am I able to do it pain free? Do I feel worse or better afterwards? And unequivocally, I feel better after doing this exercise. My foot feels energized. I can really feel the work through the arch. And again, you're also getting that cooperation of the foot, the ankle, the knee, and the hip all working together. And that coordination I have found is essential to keeping me healthy. And so I'll generally do 10 minutes of that. If I'm in a hurry, maybe only five, but I really love it as a precursor to sprints. From there, calf raises. And I found these essential to do uh, also to keep the foot strong. But what I found is I really need to do them elevated because I have so little range in this right foot, I can't really lift my heel very much above neutral because that will start to get the bones pressing together. Then I have pain. And when I have pain and it gets worse, that's a no-go. So I will lower the heel down and lift it up to just above that neutral. From there, a couple of exercises that I learned from the brilliant minds over at Integrated Kinetic Neurology. Uh, this first one is an isometric hold for strengthening, specifically around the big toe up into the arch of the foot, and then all the way up the back of the leg to the glutes. Such a great exercise. And I have basically just my big toe and a little bit of the ball of the foot on the roller, other knee tucked into the chest, butt up off the ground, deep pelvic tuck, and I try to hold it for 60 seconds. And as you can see, the struggle is real. I always shake like crazy on this and it activates everything. I can feel the arch of my foot. I can feel those big toe muscles. And I really love this one because um, I know that in part, this arthritis came from an instability around the big toe from overstretching my big toe. And so I'm really trying to build up the muscles in the bottom of my foot and the base of the toe, the muscles that, that move my toe into plantar flexion, move the toe down. And then my last pre-sprint exercise that I'm gonna to show today are these wall plyos. And I like these because I have found, I was doing jump rope and doing other vertical jumps, and I found that those were creating more pain, and I have sadly had to let them go for now. Hopefully, they will eventually be part of my rehab. But these wall plyo jumps have the, about the right amount of difficulty so that my foot stays strong and dynamic, and I can feel the wall and move with the wall. So by tucking the pelvis under, keeping the butt up off the floor, I can really get the cooperation and work of that whole right leg and feel that dynamic work in the foot and the toes working in a way that again, litmus test, does it make me feel worse? No. Does it make me feel better? Yes. Great. Let's keep it. And then I do my sprints and I usually spend about 20 to 30 minutes on the treadmill, starting with a nice warm up walk and then building up into faster sprints. I used to do incline, but I found that walking on an incline, too much toe flexion, sad, sad toes. So keeping it nice and flat and uh, just increasing the intensity by doing those sprints. My sprints tend to be short, one or two minutes maximum, mostly about 30 seconds, fast as I can, and then back to walking. So that's just a little sampler of what I do in the gym, my happy place, the place where I come for refuge and healing that keep me able to come here, able to do the work that I love, even with this injury. Now, am I limited? Absolutely yes, I am limited. There are a lot of things that I wanna do that I can't do. I can't do a lunge with my right foot back because the, the toes curl under, I can't do it. But um, I feel that I'm keeping my body as healthy as I can. And what I did hear from the doctor when he looked at my x-rays of my foot is that my foot is actually in really good shape for someone who has arthritis. The bones aren't crunching together. I don't have a lot of decay in the cartilage. The connective tissue is healthy. And I really attribute this whole regimen to keeping that and to having me be able to be on the road all year on my feet, running around, doing all sorts of stuff and not be in pain all the time. So I'm very grateful for that. All right, so that's this episode. Next time, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the feet specifically, feet strengthening, and my beef with supportive shoes. I know everyone's excited for that one. All right, beautiful humans, I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I got a new one of these coming out every week, leading up to my surgery, and then all through my rehab. 
So please keep in touch and I hope I see you again soon. Happy bendings. Thank you.